you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Lion of the tribe of Judah, we give you all the adoration, all the exaltation this morning. Because great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. You are worthy of our praises. You are worthy of our honor. You are worthy of our adorations. We say, Blessed be thy holy name, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I am that I am, Lily of the Valley, the Bright and Morning Star, the one that was, the one that is, the one that is to come. The Lord is seated on the throne of heaven and used the earth as his footstool. Lord, we exalt you this morning. Lord, we magnify you this morning. We thank you because there is no one like you. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. You are worthy of our praises. O shetele rebo, skandala rebo, shetele rebo, rebo. Yendele rebo, skandala rebo, shetele rebo, 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 rebo. Holy rebo, soto kolo rebo, skandala rebo, soto kolo rebo, 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 rebo. Oh, la brusha tanda la raba, skali rebo, skolo rebo, rebo, rebo. Hallelujah. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for all that you do in our lives, Lord, for the miracle that you perform daily, for the love that you show daily, for the for the manifestation of your power every day. Lord, be thou glorified. Lord, be thou exalted. Lord, be thou magnified. How holy, how worthy, how excellent is you, Lord. You're worthy of our praises. You're worthy of our honor. You're worthy of our adoration. We say, blessed be thy holy name. Thank you for who you are in our life. Thank you for what you've been doing in our lives. Thank you for your faithfulness in our life. Thank you for your understanding. Everything we go through, Lord, we bless you. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Come on. You are God from beginning since the end. There's no place for lucky men. You are God of myself. You are God. You are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for a human. You are God by yourself. You can touch and see things in your hands. You called for life. Under uh, the darkness, you don't need a man to be the God you are, but you have chosen to call us your own. You are God. You are God. From beginning, From beginning to the end, there's no place for the human. You are God of by yourself. You are God of the thoughts and began. You are the throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are all the throne. You are all alone. Oh. You are God alone. From before time began. From the time began, yes, you are God. You are all your 
Unstoppable, that's who you are. Unchangeable, unchangeable, unshakable, oh, unstoppable, that's what you are. God, I will thank you because you're unshakable, you're unchangeable, God. If you know those who worship you, in because you are on your throne. You are God from the beginning, oh God. You are God on your throne. You are God all by yourself. You change it not far out. We thank you, Lord. We so worship you. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Father, we exalt you. Thank you. We give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Shane of this. Thank you, I am that I am. Lord, we worship you. Lord, I will say thank you. Faithful is your name, oh Lord. Glorious God, Father, I will say thank you. you all the other Father, the glorious God, glorious that I am, that I am. Yes. Father, we bless yes. your name. We declare your majesty. We declare your We declare your, your majesty. God. Morning. Your faith. Your majesty. Your everlasting Father. Father, I will say thank you, Jesus. Patient of days, you're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. You're, worthy. you're worthy. Hallelujah. Father, we worship. Thank you. Glorious God. Hallelujah. Glorious. Lord. Yes, Lord. Beautiful. Okay. Excellent. God. God. We bow before the glorious, glorious God. Oh, yes, God. Beautiful. Excellent, excellent God, we bow before your truth. We bow before your truth. Worship at your feet. Bow before your truth. You are the glory of Thank you for your mercy endure it forever. There is no one to be compared to you. No one we can compare to you. You are glorious, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you King of glory. Thank you, Lord of lords. Thank you, I am that I am. Oh, hallelujah to your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Holy, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God, God Almighty, yeah. the morning yeah. sun Let's worship his holy name this morning. Let's magnify him this morning. Let's give him praise this morning. Let's thank him for who he is in our life, for what he's been doing in our life, for his graciousness, for his gracious in our life, for his greatness in our life, for his wonderful works in our life. Let's give him praise. Let's give him honor. Let's give him adoration. Waking up this morning, it's not because we take a medicine to sleep and wake up. It's not because we went to sleep early or because we eat early, but we woke up this morning because of his mercy. We woke up this morning because there is still a purpose for us to be here. Let's give him praise this morning that as we have woken up today and we have come to his presence this morning, let his presence fill our heart. Let his presence fill our heart. Let his presence fill our heart. Let his presence fill our heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we lift your name high this morning because it is not by our power, it is not by our might that we are up of this moment, Lord God Almighty. It is because of your mercy that you have given us that privilege uh, to be called your sons and daughters. Not only called sons and daughters, but to be obedient to your word uh, that we should not forsake the assembly or uh, the, the gathering of your children. But Lord, we have obeyed you this morning. We thank you for that privilege uh, because it is not right. Uh, it is not by right. Uh, it is not by birthright, uh, but it's because you're privileged also. You've given us that privilege to be called your sons and daughters. It is by your love that drawn us to you. Lord, we thank you that you have never left us uh, or you never abandoned us, but your love draw us to you. Because it is written that you first loved us before we love you. Father, we thank you. Lord, we exalt your holy name. We give you all the praises this morning. We give you all the adoration this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us welcome Holy Spirit into our midst. It's in our midst already. Let's just thank him and let's yield everything to his hand this morning. That as we are here this morning, as he has joined us this morning, let him interpret everything that we are going to discuss this morning in our heart. And interpret it to our heart and let our heart be receptive of them. Let our hearts take them in. Let our hearts digest them. Them, let our hearts start making use of them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That everywhere that we go, all the interpretation of the word we will be hearing this morning will be of a, of, of a tool for us to defeat all the purpose of the enemy and fulfill the purpose of God in our lives, sir, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Lord, we exalt you this morning. We give you all the praises. Holy Spirit, it's up to you. Take control this morning. All is surrender to you. Take control this morning and let only the Father be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining. Good morning. Happy Monday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. This is another, another day that the Lord has made. Uh, the month is flying very fast. Today is the 14th day of June 2021. Half of the year is gone, but we thank God because as the Lord is moving, it's dragging us along. It's not leaving us behind. It's taking us through every process that he has created us to fulfill in life. And I pray this morning that you will not miss out in your fulfillment of God's purpose 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What God has proposed for you to do in life, I say you will not miss out of them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When it is your turn to shine, shine in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When it's your time uh, to move for God, you will move in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The reason why you were created for, you will not go without fulfilling them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we pray it again. Amen. Let's go into our word this morning. Um, it's very, very, it's a very word that we all deal with every day and we struggle with every day. But I pray if there is an area that we are struggling with temptation, that we are actually facing challenge with temptation, this morning word will liberate us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It will be a tool that we'll be able to use to overcome every temptation that may come our way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Temptation, mm. nobody is above it, brethren. Nobody is above it. If Jesus Christ is not above temptation, you and I cannot be above temptation. Mm. So if Jesus Christ can survive temptation, you and I have the tools in our hand to survive temptation. If Jesus Christ, our Lord, uh, can go and say, yes, I have, I, I have done my course, I've run my race, and I have finished all the works, all the challenge that the temptation have come my way, I have passed them. You and I have been given the grace to pass them. Amen. Amen. So if we go through temptation, it's not like temptation will not be there, and it's not like we're not going to go through them, but we have a choice to overcome it. Amen. So if anybody tell you I didn't, I, I can't go through temptation, or I will never go through temptation, or I won't, they 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 they, they, they misquoting the Bible, or they have no knowledge of the Word of God, because temptation is there. Even Jesus said you will go through trials. Temptation is a trial. It can be it can be qualified as trial. We go through trial. We go through divers of things in our in our lives that. Uh, that, that are challenging that, you know, only God, only God can help us to win that challenge. And that's what we're going to go through this morning. If you're struggling with temptation, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible say that my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made to be perfect in your weakness. So this morning, let's go to the word and look at what the writer, writer of today is talking about. The writer of today is talking basically about what we need to do and how we need to undo them when they come. Not to shy away from them, not to pretend that they are not there, and not to struggle with them. Are you with me? Because most of the time we fall into temptation because we struggle with temptation. Let me say that again. We fall into them because we struggle with them. Because when you struggle, you know, if you're on the water and you don't know how to swim and you're still wearing a life jacket, if care is not taken, you can get choked because the life, life jacket will be trying for you to float. But if you're not relaxed in that life jacket, you will be struggling and be fighting the life jacket and you will fall and the water can get into your nose. You can fall into the thing. Instead of you relax yourself, and let the, let the Holy Spirit lead you into it because it will give you the way out. So we struggle with it. So I'm not going to do it. I don't want to do it. It's not me. It is not by power, brethren. It's not by might. It's by my spirit. Most of the time we fall into temptation because we struggle with them. <laughs> so today we are going to look at how we can deal with them without falling into them. We will go through them. That's what the Bible said. We will face them. But we don't have to do it. There's so many sins that are out there every day in our face. Do we do all of them? No. Because we use the same principle that this is not right. It is against the will of God. And we walk away from them. The same way we can do to temptation. 
And I pray this morning that anywhere that we are struggling, that you may and I may be struggling with things that are looking like a heavy temptation that we keep on falling into, we will not struggle with them anymore. Instead, we will command them to get out of our way. And we will use the word of God to shut them down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Our text this morning is found in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 8. So stay a lot. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. It prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Looking for someone to devour. That is the devil right there. It's looking for somebody. So temptation is there. It's looking for you. If you're going to struggle with him or you're going to submit to God and then resist the devil so he can go on his own way. That's what the devil does. It's going around to look at where you're standing. Is your standing, is it with God or you're standing alone? Because most of the time, like I say, when we stand alone, we will not know how to handle situations. So we struggle with that temptation and we fall into it because our strength, with no strength will any man prevail. So our strength cannot fight temptation. But when we submit to God, we can resist the devil and the devil can flee away, just like Jesus Christ did it. I will read this morning. He said, your area of vulnerability will change as the season of your life changes. But the truth is that you are always, you will always be tempted in some way or the other. But the good news is that you can be tempted and be triumphant at the same time. Just like I said, you can be tempted and still win. You can go through that temptation and still not fall into it. You can go through that temptation and still not give in to that temptation and that temptation will not beat you. I pray for you this morning. If you have been struggling with temptation this morning, yield to God and God will fight for you and you will overcome that temptation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus show us how to do it. When he faced the tempter in the wilderness, he stood on God's word. What are you standing on? Are you standing on your eye? No, I can go into that place. Nobody can touch me. Remember, you're just a flesh. Oh, I can do I am Holy Ghost fire. I am baptized. I'm going to jump into it. No, you can't do it by your power. You can't do it by your arrogancy. You can't do it by your own head knowledge. You can only do it by the submission to God, by the submission to God. When you face the temptation, when you face the temptation in the wilderness, it stood on the word of God. Here are some scriptures you can stand on when you're tempted. Number one, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You see, submission to God is paramount when we're going through temptation. What is the foundation of our heart? What is our relationship with God? Who is backing us up? Because trust me, every step that we take outside there in the world, there are temptation waiting for us. As time, the time we open our eyes and we start saying, there are temptation that we want to create doubt in our heart of who God is. So we want to limit God in our life. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, The Lord knows how to what? Rescue godly people from their trials. The Lord knows how to rescue godly people. You and I are his children. You and I are under his care. You and I are under his protection. You and I are called his sons and daughters. We, he knows how to protect us. So if we go through that trial, it's watching. The devil is, is rubbing around. But because we are submitted to God, God is watching over all. He said, if you dwell in the sacred place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of the Almighty, he said, I will be your protector. Isn't that what it says? I'm 91 verse 1. Yes, because you are dwelling in the sacred place under the shadow of the God Almighty. 
There is nothing the devil that's going around can get to you because when it comes to you, the one that you dwell in will give you a word to use to defeat the devil. And I pray for you this morning. If you're lacking the word to defeat your temptation, this morning, receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The high priest, right, the, the, the second scripture that you can use, it says Hebrew chapter 4, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. I'm giving you the scripture that you can use because, you know, Jesus Christ did not fight the devil with his power. He didn't take the, glove, the uh, boxing gloves out and start boom, boom, jabbing and all of that stuff and kickboxing. He didn't do that. Because if he wants to do that, he, he, he's tired anyway, 40 days, 40 nights of fasting. How much strength could he have gotten as a human <clears throat> to start boxing? None. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 15 and 16. It said, This high priest of ours, Jesus Christ, understand our weaknesses. So if he's fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he's already tired, he's already weak, he cannot fight physically. He faced all the same testing we do every day. Oh, there is no money in my bank account. How am I going to pay that bill? Oh, should I go ahead and do this? Should I go ahead and do things? Should I go ahead and do something? Oh, let me try and find a way to work it out. No, no. Jesus was hungry just like you were hungry. Jesus was thirsty just like you were thirsty. At that time, he has the ability to do everything that he could do. But what did he do? He resulted to God. When the devil said, turn the stone to bread. He said, no, you cannot live by bread alone. God can supply all of your needs. Don't allow the enemy to tell you to overuse who, what God has given you. So it was weak. He faced the same testing we went through. Yet, it did not fall into that temptation. Why? Because he did not struggle with the devil. He yielded to God. He coded the word of God to the devil. And the devil lost the power. You do the same thing. The one that is rescuing you. It's right there for you. All you need to do is seek him, ask him to fight on your behalf, and he will give you a word to take. So let us come boldly to that throne of grace, that throne of our gracious God. There we will receive mercy and find grace to help us when we need it most. Submission to God, submission to God. Submission to God. I know many that are hearing me, that are watching me right now, they will say, uh, they did this God thing. Where is God anyway? But I'm telling you, it is real. God is real and he can help you in every situation. I can tell you that because you might be having any doubt or any question in your mind because you don't understand who God is. I am telling you, if you submit to him, if you don't know him as your personal savior, you need to submit to him and start looking at the way he can help you. You cannot help yourself because if you can help yourself, you will have helped yourself now. Why not just think your thinking process to say, let me accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I am a sinner and I have been struggling here and there. I have been struggling in everything that I am doing. Jesus, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Savior of my life. I confess you as my Lord and my personal Savior. So this temptation that I am facing, this struggle that I am struggling with, you can give me the grace to go through and not lose my side, lose my lose my, my my cool on them he said you will find grace for to help you when you most need it hebrew chapter 4 15 and 16 and number three that we need to know is Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 which we uh, you, you cannot you cannot use Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 unless you're born again unless you know jesus christ unless you are on God's side. So I want to give you an opportunity today before we read that scripture. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal savior, tell him to come into your heart. Accept him as your Lord and personal savior. Tell him, yeah, I'm a sinner. Everybody sin every day. This, the last temptation, it actually knocked me down and the sin was overwhelming in my life. Wash me in your blood. I accept you. Come into my life. Take control of my life. Then if you do that, tell him, Jesus said, from today onward, you are the Lord of my life. I will not do anything without you. Be the Lord that control my life. 
You are Jesus, you are Lord, you are God. You are God in my life from this moment onward. And look for a church close by you to start this work, to start this work so you will not continue to fall today, rise tomorrow, go through temptation so you can get the help, the real help that you need mostly when you need it. And when you can go to that church, tell them you just received Christ. They will walk you through salvation lane. Or if you can't find one, look for rccg.org. We have redeemed Christian Church of God all over the world. Walk into that pastor that you just received Jesus Christ. Then you can now start this third step with us. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. It said, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in time, in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. If you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord, my personal Savior now, now you can now start claiming this. Now you can now take in the battle into, into your body. You can now accept Christ. You can now see the power of God working majestically in you that there is nothing temptation we do to want to hold you back. That is what we are talking about this morning. So I want you to understand that you, as a Christian, you cannot fight the devil and win on your own. Stop that. Stop that. You can't use your strength to win. Because Psalm 91, verse 1 says, those who live in the shelter of most high will find rest in the shadow of God Almighty. That's what it says. When you put on the armor of God, you will find the way to defeat the enemy. Then number four, Romans chapter 6, verse 16, verse 20. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Say, the God of peace we soon crush Satan under your feet. Hallelujah. It will, because you're now put on his whole armor. You're now dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Then it, it, you don't have a choice. God will crush him for you. He will crush him for you because at this point, you have submitted yourself to him. Like the Bible said, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee, just like Jesus Christ did. He said, the God of peace. We crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be with you at that time. Then number five, he said, I will give unto you power over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Look at all this process. Look at that step. Look at that step. Don't let the temptation of the things that are limited. Don't let them take you away from God. Instead, give yourself to God. Instead, submit to God. Don't use your energy. Don't use your intellect. Don't use your connection. Don't use what you have on this world to fight temptation because everything in this world to fight temptation, they are all temptation themselves. It will only drown you more into that temptation. Instead, submit to God, then you can face the temptation. And I can guarantee you that temptation, the, 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 the back of the, of, the, of the leg will be eating the back of their head because they will flee so fast from you. Because God said, I will give you power to overcome your enemy wherever they are. And last but the least, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Just get, we're, we're giving, us, giving ourselves tools this morning in how to fight this temptation. When we are struggling with them, we are not going to win. You don't struggle with something that you have control over. You command it. Are you with me? You don't struggle with something that's under your feet. You step on it. You don't struggle with something that you can say, oh, this is not right. I'm not doing it. I'm not even going to get involved with it because God hates it. You don't struggle with sin. You just know right, right in there that the word of God said, this is who you are. I'm not associating myself with you. Get away from me. Why? Because 1 Corinthians 10, 13 said the temptation in your life is no different from, who, to, from what others experience. And God is faithful because you follow the first step, the second step, the third step, the fourth step, the fifth step. Faithfulness of God will play out. It will not allow you. It will not allow the temptation to be, to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, it will show you a way out so that you can endure. 
So the word for you today, you're triumphant. When you're tempted, you have, you have power to win that temptation. You have power to win that, that temptation. You're tempted and you're triumphant. You're tempted and you're triumphant. Remember that. But you're triumphant only in the reliance upon the Lord. And I pray that God will give us grace to rely upon him all the time, to not rely upon our strength, because with no strength can any man prevail. God help you. God help every one of us in Jesus' name. I will pause and take contribution this morning. Sorry, three minutes over my time. Um, any contribution this morning? Anybody there to contribute? Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the word. Um, I think it's, it is good for us to uh, think about this, like you said from the beginning, like the equipment of the word is the only way for us to overcome this. And, you know, like, like in that Hebrew 12 to like crisis is our pattern. So for us to, you know, come to the fullness of his knowledge, of his ways, that is how we're equipped to be able to go through life and to be conformed to who he is because that is our purpose in, in the first place. So for us to actually be in, is to it's all encompassing is to go through all this stuff all the sufferings he went through and to see how we did it because if we were trying to actually look for alternatives like it was revealed in what we just read who we'll continually feel looking for alternative you know he said is is the pattern is how we can actually overcome but the only thing is like you've said and is rightly even in the church in our lives in my life most of the time, it's easy for me to, you know, to find, you know, to to try to actually, you know, see what way somebody did it or what way I've been doing it. Maybe it was a little bit successful, even though it didn't lead to life. But I was like, okay. So we, it's easy for us to sit to a default mind state of who we are, you know, forgetting that we are now new, and our newness is represented in Christ Jesus, mm. you know, through the Holy Spirit revealing the mind of God to us. But one thing that is very, very sure and certain about our topic today is the knowledge of the word of God. I think one of the things that we, that it is, we're not being equipped like what's just said in the, in the, the efficiency, the word of God is that is the real, you know, the real tool for overcoming and is even what you know i was speaking i was talking yesterday with somebody and it is the word of god it is to real tool for us to know you know the mind of god our to for the revelation of the holy spirit you know the holy spirit can be speaking to us we would not know but if we go to the word of god then it is manifested then we will understand the path to take to be able to overcome what we are overcome. Because it could be telling us, but we might be thinking is our own mind trying to actually detect mm -hmm. some things to us. But the true manifestation comes when we read the word, then the Holy Spirit not, it now become manifested. Then we will actually know the path to take. One of the good things about the story of Christ defeating the devil and him fleeing for him was the knowledge of the word of God. With us not knowing what God is, you know, trying to actually tell us. Or maybe we've read it, but we were not, you know, all encompassing in that one and we didn't dwell enough in it to understand that this is a tool, a tool that is powerful for us to overcome our present situation. But as we are reading it and we are dwelling in it, the Holy Spirit reveals different things every day that we will need at the present time when we are faced with those same issues. Most of the time we try to use yeah, what pastor said, we try to use, you know, flesh to fight flesh and eventually it leads to fall. But like you said, Christ never did that. But one thing that was for sure that was, he, Christ was, Christ is the word of God, but he is encompassing. He was full of the word of God. So, you know, nobody can come with the word of God and deceive him. And that was what Christ was trying to tell 
you know, I mean, Matthew, when he was talking about these Pharisees and about those words, like, you know, don't, don't be, you know, don't let the yeast, you know, don't let people deceive you. If we can know the word of God and the, the truth, you know, and let the Holy Spirit open us up in that particular moment, because it is true, the word of God that we are truly ministered to, you know, Holy Spirit can tell us something, you know, sometimes, you know, we will not get a grasp of it, like I said before, but through the word of God, we can know that this is the truth, because like I said, Christ is the truth, the way and the life, and Christ is the, you know, the, the manifestation of the word of God in its truest form, so it is important, just like that Joshua one, you know, most of the time you say, I meditate on it, but the point is for us to know who God is, to know his ways, and the word of God is how we can know him and know his ways. And that is the equipment. But the struggle is, I, I'm not going to even say about any other person. The struggle is for us to be able to, you know, you know, submit to the will, you know, to, to the Holy Spirit to lean in like we should be equipped, you know, for the fight, for the, you know, for, 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 for the purpose that we are called for by studying it. So, it's not based on maybe on Sundays we go through some verses, but it's to you know for us to do all because if we're not equipped, we will always fall into mm. you know into this uh, uh, call it uh, in a science world depression. Mm. And even more we're reading the beginning of this Rick Jonah and the call, he fell into depression. Mm. And that depression and Christ told, revealed to him with true wisdom that it was because it was not in him and one of the ways we can get you know to the presence of god you know by you know, by worship most of it but most importantly it is by dwelling in him, in his word and like i said christ is the word of god so thank you very much pastor thank i you. hope we all come to that you know point where we can actually study the word even me you know just just study just because i want to overcome i want to fulfill righteousness but to study to be able to being in to know it. Thank you. Thank you, Rayo. Thank you very, very much. Very, very powerful contribution this morning. Because guess what? When we are studying the word, what is what are we studying it for? Are we studying it and and using that word for ourselves? When the Bible, when you pick up the Bible and you're reading the Bible, are you reading the Bible and the interpretation of that Bible is talking to you? or you see somebody else in that Bible that you're reading. Because the word of God is life. Because the more that you see the word of God in you, that is when you start seeing, living that word. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. Because many people only study the word to use it for what they need it for. But when you study the word to see yourself that, oh, this is, this is talking about me. It's not talking about the person in the Bible. Jesus Christ went through that temptation. He put it there to tell you that, listen, you will go through the same thing. What are you going through right now? And now the word of God is telling you that what you're going through, this is what you need to resolve it. When we start studying the word, like you said rightly, not to fulfill all righteousness, but to study to read the word of God so that that word can transform us. No question, we have been redeemed, like we heard yesterday on our workers' meeting. But there is still process of reconciliation, of restoration, of restoration that we're going through. And that is when the temptation will start coming to want to test how redeemed are we? Do we really know who we are? Because when we don't know who we are, we will continue to fall into temptation. So the power of restoration will not be complete. That is the goal of the devil. Jesus Christ did not only come to the cross to redeem. He went to the cross to restore. So we are in the progress of restore, in the process of restoration right now. That is why it is so challenged to walk the lane. If you don't watch that, uh, that thing yesterday, thank God for Stake, the way she broke it down. Look, go and watch that workers meeting yesterday on our church. Jesus has redeemed us, but we are working the restoration process right now. That's why the temptation is so heavy. But we need to get into the word and let the word continue to clean us as we are walking through because we are so deaf in sin that we need proper cleansing. 
and God will help us. It is that word that will clean us. It is that word that will keep us going strong. And I pray that that word will continue to go strong in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Brian. Any other contribution this morning? Very powerful. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Anybody on the line? Anybody? Hallelujah. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Good morning, uh, I just want to, in fact, uh, the, uh, we are already being blessed, but I just want to just uh, appreciate what you have also re-emphasized concerning what Brother Ayo said about the world when we study, when we read the Bible, what, what do we see? Because there's a tendency for us to be thinking, oh, uh, remember what the other person did. I did a uh, word. Do not remember somebody else thought. <laughs> you know, that, that tendency, all those tendencies are always there. But, you know, that is very is food for thought this morning, very instructive. When we read the word of God, let it be that that word of God is addressing you. Put yourself there. Like my, I, 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 I really gain it. I will put myself there. This word is speaking to me. It's not, I'm not to be seeing the thoughts of Sister B, Sister C, Sister bro, Brother that, no. So th that is very instructive, brethren, that when we read the word of God, what is our purpose of reading the word of God? What is the purpose? Is it for our transformation? Is it for our changing? Is it to align ourselves with his word? Is it, is it to become like him? Is it to make corrections? Is it to carry out certain things in our life? You know, that is the thing that actually drew my attention. Just to let me re-emphasize it. It was so instructive. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I like the way that you put it, that when we read the word of God, what somebody did is what comes to our mind. We don't see ourselves in the word, and we say we're in the presence of God, but we're we are looking at everybody else, but not ourselves. That's, uh, that's human nature, but I pray that God will deliver us from that today, that when we open our scripture, God and us, and God will be telling us, this is what I expect from you. Then, because that's where we will be able to gain power. That's where the power is. When the word of God gets into us, it goes and cleans out everything that doesn't need to be there. It goes in there and, 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 and make us to, to be fit for that restoration that God is doing. Because God is purging a lot of things out of us. And the only way that we can get them purged is through the word through the word, because he said he sent his word. The word healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. And that's what the word of God does. So if you are reading the word and you're not reading it to yourself, it's not too late, start reading it to yourself. Start seeing yourself in what you're reading. Close your mind to the outside world and bring your mind into God and let God dwell in that heart, cleanse it, mold it, Make it the way it wants it to be. So you can be that light that when you get out there, you will shine without any blockage in the mighty name of Jesus. Any other one before I ask Brian to pray for us this morning? Any other contribution? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Brethren, there is no temptation that's out there that you cannot overcome. Oh, it's so, it's so powerful, it's so strong, I can't do it. It's because you're trying to do it yourself. Submit to God, resist the devil. The devil will leave. Don't let the temptation bury you. Create division between you and God. Do not allow it. We all face temptation every day. The only thing that's keeping us going is our submission to God. And we are still fail sometimes, but God is faithful. He's faithful that he will hold us up with his right hand of righteousness so that we we'll go back and go and rebuild and regroup and then go back again. And next time we come across it, we fight. We don't even fight. We just walk through it because it is no longer an issue in our lives because God has equipped us with what we give us, a triumphant journey, at the end of it. And I pray that God will help us all in Jesus' name. Yeah, Brian, go ahead, help us, help us today, please. Thank you very much, Pastor. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. For, for your love, for your kindness, for your grace. We thank you for who you are in our life. Father, you've continually revealed yourself. And this morning again, 
You have encouraged us with your word. You have sent your spirit to minister to us. So, yes. And we've, we, we've seen the manifestation of it. Thank you. All the things we're lacking. Thank you. That is all, as in, and we're lacking a lot of things. Yes. But you, everything that we are lacking, we have them in you. Yes. Like you've revealed to us today that, you know, with, with, with our strength, we will never overcome. No. But if we abide in you, yes. if you rest in you, yes. if we dwell in your presence, yes. if we abide underneath your shadow, yes. that you will protect us. Yes. Thank you for, for who you are. Thank like you've revealed to us today, it's not like we, you know, like Christ did. Like it's not like we will not go through temptations and trials, mm -hmm. but for us to trust in you as our rock and refuge in every situation, the grace, oh Lord, to be able to trust in you, to have faith, to not continue to live based on our old self, but to live our newness in Christ, that we are equipped, that we are saved, that we are redeemed, and we are being restored every single day, Father. The grace to be able to deny ourselves, to, to set our gaze onto Christ, to look onto him, to be equipped in his presence, to be equipped through your word. That is why we're praying for this day, oh yes. Lord. We have continually looked unto ourselves and we have failed and we are still mm -hmm. failing. Mm -hmm. But you have showed us, Lord, mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus, sending your son mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. save us and you know, equipping us with your spirit to reveal your mind to us. Father, this morning we have heard your word. The yes. grace to be able to implement this by yes, abiding Lord. in yes, your Lord. word, yes, abiding in you. That is yes, what Lord. we are praying for today. Yes, we don't want to continue to be hearing this word and continue to live in, in, live in perpetual fear mm. of the enemy mm. or, or worry. Like you've revealed to us that why should we worry if we are in you? Because in you, we are, we are strong. Yes. Without you, we are weak. But in mm. you, your strength, your strength is enough for us. Yes, Lord. And your power is made manifest in our own weakness. Oh, yes, Lord. But I take glory in our life. Thank you for this word that you have revealed to us. Yes, but as we want to continue our day, our lives in you. Mm -hmm. Help us to, to set our perspective onto thee, to always set our gaze on you, not to continue to set our gaze on ourselves. Help us to inhabit your presence, seeking your word, dwelling in it letting it fill us up yes, lord. oh lord let the holy spirit reveal your mind to us through your word mm -hmm. and let us be equipped for the for, for 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 the purpose that you have set ahead of us in jesus name mm -hmm. but i thank you like we have like you have seen okay. and most of the time there's a default mode in our life mm -hmm. father we don't want this default mode. our default mode to should be to your word just like christ did help mm -hmm. us to come to the fullness of the knowledge of your love and grace in christ jesus for our life not to continue to default into fretting into worrying into going back in our own shell but to look unto christ yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. to trust in his promises to trust in his word he is our he is our path that help us to to fashion our life by yielding to the Holy Spirit's leading, O oh Lord. He said, those who are led by the Spirit are the children of God. Help us to be led. Help us to commit ourselves unto the... Help us not continue to look unto others or ourselves. Help us not to continue to look for men approval or to seek to do public deeds, yes, but to seek your, your will, your glory in Jesus' name. But I thank you once again. Thank you, Lord. The revelation of your grace in your word that is revealed to us this morning, that we should seek your presence. We should seek your righteousness. We should seek your kingdom. Mm -hmm. That in all that, that all the things that we are struggling with and that we might all struggle with, that you will provide it for us. Yes. But that the grace to, 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 to set our mind on our eternal hope to reign with you, to dwell in you, let it fill us up so that we will not continue to fret over our present situation Amen. like it was revealed christ was hungry but the hunger never did define who he was mm -hmm. because he knew his purpose mm -hmm. but i don't let our present situation define who we are in you amen help us to focus on you set our minds on you amen let your name be exalted we amen. thank you for the, the vessel you have used and everyone everyone that has contributed 
Thank you, Lord. Help us not to be hearers only, Father. Amen. Help us to be doers of this word. Let this word, let it germinate in us. So give us a heart of flesh where your words can be germinate. That will be a fruit and that will witness of your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Father. As we want to go today, we dedicate our going and our coming unto you. Yes, Everything Lord. we're going to be doing, Father. Help us to be a reflection of your love, of Amen. your light in the world. Yes. Let people see you, not see us. And help us not to see people also through our own eyes, but to see with your own heart, oh Lord. Yes. To see goodness, to be compassionate, to reveal your love to the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Like you said yesterday, like it was revealed to us during our sermon yesterday, the enemy is trying to divide us. Yes. Help us to stay united in you. He said, in yes. you yes. is the only way we can do yes. anything. Yes. Without you, we cannot do anything. Help us to dwell in you. Amen. And let your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. 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 May the grace, may the grace, may the grace of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy God. Spirit, Spirit be with us now. Us now. Amen. 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 Surely goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days, days of us. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord, Lord forever Lord. and ever. Amen. Amen. I am the one the Lord has blessed, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining. God bless you. Cover you with the blood of Jesus. May you find favor in Jesus' name. God bless Amen. you. Amen.